Hello everyone, Scott here again. Welcome back. I just got out of seeing The Terminator. Yes, the original one from 1984 was actually part of the Flashback Film Fest here in Thunder Bay, and actually in Canada. The Flashback Film Fest, uh, not sponsored by the way, though I would love if it was. Uh, this is an annual thing. This was from February 2nd to 8th, one week only at Cineplex. And there's all the locations, and there we are, Thunder Bay... Where the hell are we? There it is, Silver City Thunder Bay Theatres. There it is. As you can see from this poster, and I actually took a picture of it as well, but this is sci-fi movies, classic stuff like that. Um, they Just to go through it, A View to a Kill, Back to the Future, Drunken Master, Dune, Gremlins, Hot Fuzz, Monty Python and the Holy Grail, Raising Arizona, Shaun of the Dead, Terminator 2 3D, The Big Lebowski, The Iron Giant, The Terminator, The World's End, and War Games. Now, one of these things is not like the other. Why one Bond movie with a view to a kill? I don't understand that. Big Lebowski always blows my mind for being included in stuff like this. As does Raising Arizona. I don't get that one. Um, it is kind of neat to see the Cornetto trilogy with Shaun of the Dead, uh, World's End, and Hot Fuzz. Um, War Games is an interesting one. Like They'll pull some ones where you wouldn't expect it, like War Games, Monty Python, Holy Grail. The original Drunken Master is a crazy one to see here. Uh, Dune, Back to the Future 1. They've done it where they released 1, 2, and 3 uh, all in one shot before. Terminator and Terminator 2 they did back to back. Now, of these, I kind of missed out on seeing A View to a Kill. I'm bummed by that one, but the timing didn't work. Gremlins, I feel it's overrated. But like Hot Fuzz, World's End, Shaun of the Dead, I saw them when they originally came out in theaters. <laughs> Literally, when they first were released, I went to the theater and saw them. So I, mm, okay. Um, T2, the 3D release last summer, also went and saw that one. So, like, it, it literally is there again. It's the same thing. So, I mean, neat, but I just saw that. But the Terminator. I hadn't seen the Terminator in theaters. Um, it came out in 1984. I was six. Obviously, couldn't go to see it. On February 6th, 2018, I was able to. And here's the best part. I hadn't seen the Terminator since the 80s, because when it came on video I eventually saw it, but I know I hadn't seen it after I saw it too, and that was 91. So, here's where I get to admit something weird. Arnold Schwarzenegger is my favorite action star. Um, I own the Terminator. I'm trying to collect all of Arnold's VHS movies. Uh, that's up through... Um, I think Collateral Damage is one of the last ones. Um, but I have a fair number. Um, I, I went on a hunt last summer and, and such, where I just I go looking in those, those second-hand places for VHS, and I've ended up with, I think, eight, six selling copies of Terminator. Um, I've got two different versions of the two-pack with it, and two, I've got three as well. But this is probably the coolest one. This is the most recent one I got. It actually... When I visit my dad, he, he's got a place, uh, like a spare room, and he put all the tapes up on the dresser, and this one fell behind. So I didn't find this one until Christmas. It was actually there from uh, last summer. This movie, or this copy, rather, of The Terminator, is by Helmdale, who released the original Terminator. Like, it's a Helmdale release. So this is cool. I, I have an original one from 91, so they re-released the tape when... Terminator 2 came out, but I never liked the Terminator all that much. Do I have to hand in my movie fan card now? <laughs> um, what the Terminator was to me, always, was long plotting and boring. T2 fixed all that. Now, I was probably 10 years old when I saw it. I'm 39 and 40-something weeks. <laughs> so I'm about to be 40 in two weeks. I was excited to see this, because I want to also see all those movies in theater. Um, I'd seen everything that w was like a big thing from like the Expendables movies and Escape Plan. Um, I didn't see Aftermath, it never came here, but I saw The Last Stand, I saw him in the rundown, so I did definitely see that one as well. And of course, Terminator 2 got the re-release. And Running Man was part of the film thing last time. So Terminator, I wasn't going to pass this up. And it was cold when I went. 
but I still went. About 20 people were in the theater when I saw this. And I was excited to see how it would hold up for me, if I would actually enjoy this. And I did, a lot. Um, also, it's only 90 minutes, or like 108. So I don't know why I was like, man, I was, it was long. It's not. It's actually pretty quick paced. Um, the story of the Terminator. Let's just go through this one as if it is what it is. Uh, basically, this person shows up and starts hunting people named Sarah Connor. Another man shows up and is stalking a woman named Sarah Connor. Eventually, they try to reach out to the Sarah Connor woman, and the guy who's stalking her protects her from the big guy. And then it's revealed the big guy is not what you think he is. He's actually some kind of robot. And he's a man from the future, trying to save her from the robot. And then you would, and then they get interrupted and things happen, and it's superbly paced at how the information is fed to you. Because if you come in and watch two or three or all these ones, everybody knows it's this metal endoskeleton covered with flesh, and that's it. But the first movie was fantastic at establishing that, and actually getting that out there in such a way where they didn't take it for granted. It, it asked you to believe something, did a little bit of it, and then went all the way with it, and then moved to the next part, and the next part. And it's crazy to think about how it pulled that off. Um, the thing that gets me with that is, like, the, the scene with the police station is nuts. Very minimalistic in ways, and yet doesn't hold back in others. But you could tell, like, this is James Cameron trying to make something of his own accord, which got a budget, but not much, but he... He was the Michael Bay of his time, where he was able to make a lot happen for a little, and then they went, oh, okay, what if we give you more money? He's like, got it. And then made it work with Terminator 2, True Lies, Titanic, Avatar, which... Been eight, it's been nine years since Avatar. Where is that sequel? Or the five, whatever. The Terminator is masterful at... I mean, it's kind of a horror movie in its way, but how it goes out there and paces things and delivers the information that you need and then some that you don't and sees what you do with it and plays on expectations about is this man crazy or not, and then the next step happens, no, it's true, it's real. And how it all just ties everything together really, really well in the end, where it all, like, I mean, you've got a time travel story. I said in my GPC for Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, the best time travel story is one where I can tell you things, but it's literally letting the audience who's witnessing it know about things that have happened in the past for these future characters. And everything that happened in that works in that way. And here, because of the things that are said and the actions that take place for Sarah Connor, it literally relays how they happen for the future that Kyle Reese's character knows about. Because he knows about the past. He comes back to do the stuff which ends up influencing it becoming his own past timeline. But that's how it always was. Because yeah, it's perfectly looped. It it's it sets everything up so nicely. And really of its own accord, doesn't need sequels. And to think we got one of the movies that is was called the best sequel. Um for the longest time it was it in Godfather Part Two, which were known as two of the only movies that had a sequel better than the original. I mean, for context on that one, X2, the sequel to X-Men, in 2003, was viewed as, like, the third one that was better than the original. Like, that's the kind of time frame we're talking with these. And Empire Strikes Back as well, but no one people thought of that one this is quite the same way. But it, it's up there, too. Um, nowadays, sequels are, are commonly seen as being good and, and or better. Like, it, it happens quite a bit now. But this was back in the day when that doesn't, doesn't happen. And then you get three, which I love, but a lot of people don't like. Salvation, which I felt missed out on part of the fun of what these movies could be. Because even though people are like, oh, Terminator is not about fun. Yeah, it is. Yeah, there's some funny, fun, fun stuff in that. And we have Genesis, um, which did go on the fun, too much for some. And now Cameron's looking to revamp things and simply continue what close it out. So fair enough, but it doesn't need sequels. 
Um, obviously, one thing is it is a 1984 movie, so there is a problem with some of the visual effects. They hold up for the most part, but there's times when a bit of a green screen's happening, and the footage in the background does this, but this doesn't move. So it's like, oh, ooh, that mm, that looked weird. That that was a little off. Um, also, the the endoskeleton when it's moving, it's clearly like something about the size scale doesn't work. So it's walking around, but it is in the frame, and it looks like it's there, but it still just looks small. It's it's Stan Winston, 1984. It's fine, but right, you got you got to take a grain of salt with that. So. Yeah, I was incredibly pleasantly surprised by how good that was. Um, I was hopeful, too, uh, that it would be. So I'm very happy to see that one. And, I mean, der, I recommend The Terminator! What am I supposed to say at this point? It's a 1984 movie in 2018. Of course you've seen it, right? Well, if you haven't, and you've only seen the sequels, do check it out, because you'll be surprised how well it works. That's how I saw it, and I do recommend that. So, there you go. Thanks for watching. This wraps up this shirt in recording, so that's the last one you'll see of it for a while. Unless I throw it on anyway, just because. But this has been on Cyclops Scott here on YouTube. Twitch as well, I am recording these live. Thank you for watching the three people in there, and I'm one of them uh, watching the chat, so... Uh, anyway, Sundays at 4, Eastern, is going to be my Twitch streams. Not just these, where I record these, but just talking about stuff as well in movie chats and things, so check that out. GuiltyPlayerSimmon.com and on Facebook as well. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.